I've been thinking about difficult literature since I talked last um, week um, about having cognitive overload from reading quite formally difficult books for some time. Um, I'm kind of wondering what difficult literature meant, what a difficult book might, how we might define it. And actually, in the end, I think it is quite straightforward. I think we can we can slice the history of the novel almost down the middle. Not quite symmetrical yet, but essentially it is from the mid 18th century as the novel began to create itself as a, as a form up until the turn of the 20th century with the advent of modernism until now. And so that around the 20th century is our, is our midpoint. And up until that point, it's safe to say that the novel is a fairly conventional form. It relied on a number of things. At its best, it had story, strong characters and plot. And the way it worked was um, characters would exist inside a story, things would happen to them, they would react a certain way, and through how they reacted to certain obstacles, we would have an understanding of their emotional and psychological makeup. But it needed things to happen to them, them to react, um, for us to have a sense of who they were. Um, the, the internal life was revealed by how people behaved in life when faced with things. That was pretty much it. There were, there were other considerations. Flaubert used a kind of heightened Mandarin style to um, somehow reveal or disclose the characters. Um, but he was kind of anomalous. Then you have maybe Dostoevsky, who was the, the real first writer of ideas in the sense that you would have characters sitting down and revealing themselves through how they believed in the world. But for the most part, it was a sense of action revealed the internal world. And then you have modernism. Now, if I was to quote one of my commenters, a um, know-it-all, know-nothing, I would say that modernism in the arts happened, or, or there was a kind of coalescence between three thinkers that kind of gave birth to modernism in the arts. And you could say Freud was one, absolutely. The, the, his... his his notion of the subconscious, his his sort of uh, rallying rallying cry that that we are we are um, kind of you know s slaves to the master of, of of our subconscious or our unconscious or whatever was was one key thing. Then you had the one I kind of know little or less about Bergson's exploration of the meaning of time, and then you had Husserl. Edmund Husserl, the, the, the German-Jewish philosopher whose notion of phenomenology was that, um, that we must describe the world as it is, but from the, the, the kind of the optic of each individual will see the world as it is in a, in a completely distinct way. If you put all those things together, then you have, you could argue that you know, the, 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 the writers, the, the, as, as, as kind of, as philosophers that had a kind of impact in, in the world, that those new opening of, of particular boundaries um, uh, created um, the modernist movement, uh, as well as others. Um, and the, the two critical pieces of work of the modernist movement was, was, was you know, Proust, who suddenly just found that you know that rather than us just existing um, and reacting to things in the world in a kind of temporal or linear time, that actually we were we were um, hostage to uh, hostage to, to time in a different way, um, and that we were there was a sort of um, endless kind of 
uh, kind of involution or of, of our worlds through memory and time and sense and then therefore nothing nothing was quite fixed in the way that we thought it was um, and then we had Troy, so, so à la recherche de la temps perdu was, was that. And also, of course, actually, um, Proust was the great Freudian novelist. Um, and in many ways, he was, a, he, was a, he was a more insightful psychologist than Freud. Um, so you had Bergson and Freud um, in, um, in, in Proust, and then in Joyce, I think you had more, you know, um, Husserl. Um, and if you take, you could argue that Ulysses is the first kind of great modernist piece of work. Reading again today, which I am, and listening to it, I'm going to put a, a link down below of, of this extraordinary um, kind of, not theatrical version, but a, a kind of multi-voice version that I've been listening to, is that actually, um, it seems to me that, I, you know, that, that uh, Ulysses is actually the first postmodern book um, but that's not, that's a, that's another argument stuff. But but you so, so you could and, and what happened then is all of a sudden rather than inhabiting a story in linear time, literature became this kind of vertical narrative where the internal life was um, uh, disclosed in all its particularity. Um, what that means then is we are we are we are not particularly we are relating to people but in a very different way to the story because actually in a story we're kind of we're confronting obstacles and dilemmas with our characters the characters we're reading and we're going along with it and that's actually a, a much simpler dynamic than than actually being given almost no plot uh, and but being given how people are perceiving life. And to do that in all the kind of multifarious ways that we perceive life and, and the internal uh, narrative that goes on, we are um, that that becomes a, a much much more complicated um, uh, literary experience. And so that's that's when novels became difficult in and of themselves, regardless of sort of length thematic complexity, you know, character complexity. It be, all of a sudden we were reading novels where sort of you know, syntax, vernacular, um, allusions were all particular, often peculiar, um, and therefore we were having to inhabit another in all its, um, in all its Particularity, but all in all, it's 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 sort of um, complications um, without necessarily saying, um, and this is why this is happening because it, people started referring to, we started reading it when we think people weren't doing anything big. So before it was big, there were were wars and affairs and great drama and love and hatred and revenge and all of a sudden it was just um, Stephen Dedalus walking on a beach and we are witness to his world uh, in all its shiftingness um, so his memory what he's feeling like so it becomes much more complicated and that's and difficult literature but my thought was, you know, was it this concatenation of thinkers that created modernist, modernism in art, in literature? And I started to think, well, we, probably that fed into it. But I do wonder whether, and this is controversial perhaps, I wonder whether the real pivot was... French Impressionism, that the real shift in how we might permit consciousness to render a work of art was when the French Impressionists suddenly um, had essentially allowed the what we'd taken for granted up until that point 
as the world existing in solid form, that the re reality out there was the same as the reality in here. Um, and then actually French Impressionism said no. It basically said that, that, that we, can, we, we have to abandon the concrete, that actually the only really honest rendering of the world is our sense impressions and that is the mo and then you know great works of art were made that may now seem kind of you know kind of cliche and banal but at the time and if you go and see some of the big big monets in, in our, our, our art museums they, they are still as shocking today as i'm sure they were there clearly not on postcards or on small pictures but in, in real in real in, in facing they are sort of but that's the moment to me. That's the moment where, where as writers, I think they suddenly said, "We don't have to, we don't have to hang this on plot or story anymore. We just have to examine how the world might, how the ordinary world might be perceived, and that is enough to create art, to create the, to, to create the novel." Um, the the difficulty because it's not so you know the, the the big French impressionists are not difficult anymore, whereas modernist literature still is difficult to a certain sense, and 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 that I think actually is about language, um, and that's because we have a uh, we are we are not entirely sure I think how we how we think and use language even now. Um, that's why, for a long time, we actually thought that the stream of consciousness writing, which seemed, for the most part, to be invented by Freud, not Freud, sorry, Joyce, was somehow mimicking how the how the mind works. But actually, that's not true. I think we, you know, we think much more fragment in fragments, and that's what how modernists developed. I think from from um, from stream of consciousness, endless involuted sentences, Proust and the end of Ulysses, um, to to hugely fragmented and Ulysses actually does both of it um, hugely fragmented and you know um, blocks of of, 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 of of words that are that are sort of juxtaposed and jar and seem irrelevant but you're looking at sometimes you're looking in a in a kind of Lacanian sense you're looking for um, uh, themes of of, of 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 sound and of of um, is it homophonia? I don't I can't remember. What the, so just uh, that's the way the brain works. That the, the um, but it doesn't it it doesn't produce story. Um, it produces something else. And the difficulty is this, is reading something that's linear that is trying to deliver something that is vertical. Um, stacked on top of each other, which you kind of can do in a painting. It's it's there, um, but anyway, I'm not sure this has made as much sense as I like, planned. But um, I think it's uh, I think it's it, it's you know the the really aren't, aren't difficult books prior to modernism, and then modernism creates complexity and difficulty in a way that. That whereas it might mimic us cognitively, it's very different, difficult for us to to understand. And it it may be that it's you know, and often I feel that, that modernism took the, the the novel into a dead end, and it needs a real artist to take modernism and 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 actually create both a rewarding book creatively and emotionally uh, um, and kind of give the pleasure of the reading experience um, and most great modernist novels I tend to admire rather than love I mean I I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with um, uh, Ulysses and Finnegan's Wake but it's it, it's always through admiration and curiosity never love and pleasure Anyway, that's it. I don't know whether that's in any way interesting or helpful uh, for anyone thinking about these things. Um, yeah, thank you. Goodbye.